how's it going today? And we are exploring player character animation in Unreal Editor for Fortnite or in Fortnite. And this is important because it allows us to tell stories using Fortnite and we get to see just the wide range of control that we have over our player character. Now, in Fortnite, we're, we have a camera that's following the character this camera can never really get in front of the character. It can just get to the side at best. We never see the character's face, which is unfortunate. But outside of that, in this mode, we have a tremendous amount of control over the animations that this character is doing. In fact, it's a wide range of animations that could allow us to tell a story. And that's why I am doing this tutorial today, is to kind of just review the range of animations available to us from this perspective. W is forward, kind of a jog forward. S is going to be back, backing up. A is going to be to the left and D is going to be to the right. Now if we press W, and this is probably one of the most common shots you might want to use, is if you hit the W and the right mouse button, we're in this walk mode which is really helpful and really cool for showing our character going from one location to another. So that's really fantastic. Then of course we have the idle pose, which is just the character standing there. Then if we press B, we have, you may have a range of emotes and answers that we can use, and those might be fun for celebrating something. That's B. And if we hit control, we hit we can crouch down and hit control again we can stand up so that's real handy too and if we had W and control we can slide and so that's really cool too so W and control we can slide so that's a nice feature there now if for some reason you accidentally go into creative mode you want you gain control by pressing F and R is reload. Now if we want our character to really run, we press W and shift and we can really run like that. Only for a short time. Now if we want, these characters also have almost like superhuman ability and if we're going forward and we hit jump at the same time, we can actually scale up building so like I can jump up on that roof it wouldn't seem like I could but I hit W and jump and the left mouse button and I can can I get up on this building I don't know let me try not every building I can get up on but so W and then jump and left mouse button and I can get up on buildings that probably not realistically I could do it in real life, but I can I get up on this in W and then I'm gonna hit the space bar and left mouse button and up on there if I go. So as you can see there is just a wide range of control we have over our player character. So what's great about this is that as far as going to tell a story you know, if we think about it, we have this you know, small city that's already set up for us with all kinds of detail. Look at this wind turbine, and it's even got rust on there. You know, it's an entire city that we can use as our backlot to tell a story. And then we also have this player character that can do quite a bit of animation already. What I'd like to do next is bring in a camera and show you the differences of control. Oh, there is one other one other thing I noticed in here. If you hit H, one thing I noticed if you hit H on the keyboard, we get this kind of head shake, which is, is cool. I didn't know we could even do that. So that's with the H. Okay, and now what I'd like to do is show you the difference, the, the range that we have where we can actually get in front of our character by using a camera. So let me jump into Unreal Editor for Fortnite here. And I did a tutorial just about this already. There's four devices, that, three devices that we need and one level sequence. So we'll just get a trigger device here. Bring that into the scene. 
we'll just go ahead and leave it visible since this is a test. And I'll make it, well, I usually set a delay here, so let's just put a 10 second delay. And then all we need next is the cinematic device, this. And then we also need a cine camera. So I'll search up here under place actors, cine camera and drag this into the scene. Now I'll just kind of set up my camera here in front of that store. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, we're going to put everything in focus and maybe I'll just get a little bit wider angle here. Okay, so we've got that set up, our camera set up. I'll just set it up like that. Okay, and then we just need a level sequence. So we come into my project folder here, and we're going to right click and get a level sequence. And I'm gonna make this go for a long time so I can have time to get through everything. So with the camera selected in the scene right there, I'm gonna double click into here hit control and zoom out and we'll make this we can make it as long as we want to make it actually so I'm gonna make this Just trying to grab that red marker there we're gonna make this at least that long come to track and add our camera and so this is what our camera sees now now I'm going to have to push these changes, but I also need to, that's all I need this for. I don't need anything. So I'm going to close the sequencer now. I'm going to come into the outliner and on the cinematic sequence device, we are going to set it to our level sequence here. And we are going to set it to play off of the trigger. And I just want to show you the range, the increased range of uh, animations that we can capture. So I'm going to go ahead and end the game and push those changes. And then I'll be back just as soon as that's done. Now here, the, the camera is going to take over. And you'll see when it does, you see the camera takes over, I'm going to have a lot more control over my player character. So right now, we are getting that trigger right there. Okay, so once I hit that trigger, after 10 seconds, the camera will take over. And you'll see, like right now, in the player character camera, third person camera, I can't get in front of my character, but watch what happens. Now, I thought it was broken, but then I forgot I have a 10 second delay. But that's just to allow myself to get ready to start filming. So here we are. So now, uh, there I am. So there's, it's a little weird getting used to these controls because things don't always, so that's why you want to give yourself plenty of time, not really going forward. But see, I'm moving my mouse from left to right right now. And look how I can turn my character around. See that? That's a control that I don't have with the regular camera. And of course this is great, but look, I can look down on the ground. I can look, I'm just moving my mouse up. I can look up at the sky. I can even look straight into the camera and walk straight to the camera. And look at the control that I have. I'm looking down just by moving my mouse. I'm not using any other controls right now. But you see now with the camera, the range of control and movement that I have, looking up, looking down, look to the side, spinning around completely. And this really is all the additional control I need. Now what got me interested in this is you'll notice how the player character is blinking, which is really great. If I hit the right mouse button, I noticed I can make the left eye, her left eye blink. See that? <laughs> I don't know if that, I don't think that's supposed to happen, but anyway. But then I still have all my other controls like crouching, standing up, but now we have it from 
this perspective. And the only downside is, the only downside is that I cannot, she turns automatically, so that's programmed into her to do that. But I have pretty much full control over everything except for hand movements and mouth movements. But she is like animated kind of on her own and to a certain extent just doing her own thing in an idle mode. But I just think this has a lot of potential to tell short films. And this is using, of course, the cine camera and not the player character camera. But between those two, you have probably 80% of the animations that you'd need to be able to tell a story. It just takes some practice getting used to things. Things can get weird and you can lose your perspective. So I can turn her around and I can head off this way. But it's weird. It takes some practice getting used to it. So I can bring, I can turn, I use, I'm just sliding my mouse from side to side to get her to turn around. So that's all done with mouse control. And then if I press W, she'll go, she'll run the direction that she's facing. So W will send her off that way. And then if I go side to side with my mouse, I can bring bring her back this way. And then like I said, I have I can make her look up to the side, down. And she's got that blinking action, which is really great and really makes her seem like a living and breathing character. Plus she's got some automated movement in there that I'm not controlling at all but it's just really interesting and I think forms the basis of being able to make short animated films so anyway that's all I had for today take care have a great day and I'll talk to you next time